am authorized and directed by the President of the United States to proclaim the independence of the Philippines as a separate and self-governing nation. Hi, I'm Kenneth Lagasca. I'm Sally Matoto. And I'm Ramilla Irby. And today is the 119th Philippine Independence, Independence Day! Day! This year's theme is Kalayan 2017, Pagbabagong Samasamang Balikatin. Here are five facts you need to know about Filipino Independence Day. Fact number one. So actually the first clip you saw was from July 4th, 1946. So which is it, June 12th or July 4th? Well actually on June 12th, Emilio Aguinaldo declared Philippine independence from Spain in 1898. Unfortunately what followed was the Philippine-American War and another 43 years of colonization and imperialism under the United States. Then on July 4th, 1946, the U.S. granted independence to the Republic of the Philippines. It wasn't until 1964 that the Estado Macabagal issued Republic Act No. 4166, which changed Independence Day from July 4th to June 12th, and renamed July 4th Republic Day. Fact number 2. The KKK, or Kataas-taasan Kagalanggalang Nakatipunan ng Mga Anak ng Bayan, was a secret society founded in 1892 by Andres Bonifacio with the purpose of gaining independence from Spanish rule with any means necessary. Originally starting in Manila, the Katipunan spread to different provinces where they recruited all those qualified to fight their cause. In 1896, the group's existence was unfortunately made public to Spanish authorities. In response, Bonifacio congregated all the leaders and members in a meeting where the majority agreed on declaring a nationwide arm revolt. This would ensue the beginning of the Philippine Revolution, a war that Bonifacio himself does not survive but would end in the country gaining its independence from Spain behind the leadership of Emilio Aguinaldo. Fact number 3. June 12, 1898, Emilio Aguinaldo declared Filipino independence and opened the first ever democratic institution in Asia and officially became president. The Treaty of Paris officially ended the Spanish-American War and therefore Spain lost the war to America and sold us for 20 mother million dollars. Okay, and mind you, America accepted it to ratify the treaty. These motherfuckers actually wanted to believe that we, the Philippines, wanted them to take over. We are now U.S. territory. Two weeks after Aguinaldo's inauguration, an American sentry killed a Philippine soldier stationed at the San Juan Bridge in a gesture of resistance against newfound Philippine independence, which then started the Filipino-American War. Fact number four. In response to the U.S. occupation of the Philippines, Aguinaldo launched a new revolt, this time against the U.S. Under President McKinley, the Philippine-American War had begun. While the Katipunan fought hard the guerrilla warfare, U.S. forces were able to capture Aguinaldo in 1901, who then took an oath to the U.S. and ended the rebellion. In 1902, the insurrection was declared to be over. So, July 4, 1946 was the day when America officially recognized the Philippines as being independent. And this was through the Philippine Independence Act, also known as Tidings from Sofia. It was an act that offered Philippine independence. However, because America didn't believe Philippines could govern themselves, there was a 10-year transition period trying to ease Philippines into governing themselves. This was under the guise of democracy, but there were other results as well. So, being a colony under America, Philippine immigrants were seen as nationals. It was like a step up from the regular immigrants. When America recognized the Philippines as being free, it f***ed the Philippine immigrants over in America because they were now seen as aliens, which meant that they could no longer work legally in the U.S. And the act limited Filipino immigrants um, going to America to 50 per year. So this was a really good legal cover for racially excluding Filipinos who were also hit by the depression at the time. Now, why did America let Philippines go? So there are many factors that up to that. Part of it is that in the 1930s, America was being isolating. They didn't really care about foreign relations, partly because they already had a war with Europe, and so they had debt accumulating, and their stock market just crashed in 1929. So they weren't at all concerned. So President Roosevelt withdrew from Asia. Also, America didn't want to have to support the Philippines if Japan attacked it. But are we truly independent? In 2017, we still see the effects of Spanish and American colonialism. In terms of the economy, the Philippines is largely dependent on overseas Filipino workers, or OFWs, 
who are usually sent to America in hopes that they'll send money back. OFWs are also highly educated, attributing to the brain drain, a concept used to describe highly educated Filipinos leaving the country. We also see things like colorism, which is the discrimination against darker skin within the Filipino community. This is most obvious in skin whitening products like papaya soap. Despite all this messed up controversy, it's important to remember why we celebrate this holiday. We don't necessarily celebrate the outcome, but we do celebrate the fight. Okay. Emilio Aguinaldo declared this day because he wanted to inspire Filipinos to fight against Spaniards. It is a day where we recognize the heroes who gave up their lives, for the men who were abused and punished, for the women who were raped. We honor these victims. Filipinos are fighters. We're constantly fighting. But we should be proud of that. Hashtag Makibaka. To celebrate today, you can show your pride by wearing any Filipino clothes, PCE gear, or if anyone wants to go all out, would highly recommend rocking a Baja. From personal experience, it's very comfortable and liberating. Also, you can celebrate by meeting up with other people and cooking your favorite Filipino dishes. And once the food is prepared, in the spirit of the day, eat with your hands. But if you can't do any of this, just take a second today, think about the struggles that our people have gone through and endured the resiliency during these times, and just really remind yourself how proud you should be to be full. Hi, I'm Kano Sakaska. I'm Sammy Matsuro. And I'm Romello Irby. And we're your 2017-2018 Culture Coordinators! Woo! That's a wrap. Hi, Mom. <laughs>